when my accident happened, I was putting roof and felt on my son's treehouse. Um, it had rained earlier in the day and the tree was slippery. One minute I was up on the roof, next minute I knew I was flying through the air thinking this is going to hurt. The day my dad had his accident, I was at college and I got the call probably about halfway through my lunch break from my mum that I needed to get on the next train I could and get to her as soon as possible. So by the time I got to my mum I'd calmed down quite a lot which is when I'd found out that my dad had in fact gone to hospital and mum was, I never want to see her like that again. Um, I remember waking up in a pool of blood, looking up and thinking how lucky I was to be alive. I was in a lot of pain, um, but being the kind of person I am, a stubborn male, I thought I'm going to get up, go and have a shower, wash away the blood and the ache, aches and pains, and um, carry on with the job I was doing. I was in school and my deputy head came down and told me that I was going home with my best friend at the time. At that moment I became stressed and spent the whole rest of the school day not really concentrating as I was wondering what was happening. As soon as I was out of school and able to go on my phone, I messaged my dad because I believed that he was the one who was least likely to have hurt himself. This is when I found out that he'd broken his back. It was only after getting up off the patio and walking into the downstairs bathroom where I was going to have a shower that I realised that actually I'd probably hurt myself more seriously than I thought, at which point I uh, lay on the floor in a lot of pain. And um, luckily for me, I had my mobile phone in my pocket and was able to dial 999 because I was home on my own. It was terrifying to know that my dad had been airlifted because having to go in an air ambulance just makes everything seem so more real than a land ambulance because it's not something you see all the time. So it just made all of his, the possibilities for what could be wrong with him so much more severe and I was terrified that we were going to lose him. They were very good, immediately set to me to check I was okay, as okay as I could be anyway. Um, calmed me down because by this point I was actually quite stressed out. I was starting to realise I had really badly hurt myself. I've never really heard of the air ambulance before that event. I'd seen it going overhead and I knew it was important, but it never really been important to me. I've always wanted to go in a helicopter, but not quite that way. Um, I remember initially on the flight feeling quite ill and uh, immediately again the paramedics were in the back dealing with me and before I knew it we were landing on the ground in Plymouth. At the time my hair was long and I wasn't cutting it because I didn't enjoy having my hair cut but I decided that it was probably the best thing I could do so I grew it out and had it chopped off for the air ambulance. The injuries I sustained were actually discovered after a CAT scan because I told the ambulance crew when they arrived that I was fine, I hadn't broken my neck on my back. But actually on having a full body CAT scan, they discovered I'd actually broken five vertebrae, three ribs and I had a nasty head wound as well. So as a family we play in the Torrington Silver Band and as a part of Kieran's hair cutting fundraise they agreed to host a concert where all the proceeds rather than going to them as usual would go towards the air ambulance. So as a family, I think it was really nice to know that we had that support through our close group of friends. My plan is to run a 10k next year on or around the anniversary of my accident to raise money for the ambulance. It's scary whenever the air ambulance goes overhead because you never know where it's going. But also from the experience my dad had with them, I know that whoever they're going to is going to get the best care possible and they're likely to make a better recovery than if the air ambulance didn't exist. I'd say that if you want to do a fundraiser for the air ambulance, just do it. They're grateful for any help that they can get and it really is just such a worthwhile cause to donate money for. It really does take a community to keep our air ambulances flying.